highest honor award an exemplar of a strong woman with an undeterred will she returned to cinema after her fight with cancer with the drama dear maya she is also actively involved in social service and has been appointed as the global unfpa goodwill ambassador in 1999 and at present is a unfpa goodwill ambassador for nepal she works to promote women's rights preventing violence against women human trafficking and so on she continues to inspire people diagnosed with the dreaded disease cancer she turned into a motivational speaker to motivate and inspire people with her experience and battle with cancer her book healed was released in 2018 and is a powerful moving and deeply personal story of her life we welcome uh, ms manisha koirala to besam literature Festival. to host this conversation with ms manisha koirala we have dr satish mode who is the director of besam business school before joining wesim dr mode was a professor in strategy and associate dean at the nmims university he completed his doctoral research from the university of mumbai in business strategy at jbims mumbai he is one of the founder directors of the world hindu economic forum and the founder and past president of center for international studies mumbai he has authored several pioneering books including the most popular book discover the arjuna in you so without much ado i will hand it over to dr satish mode to begin this conversation with ms manisha koira thank you devendra for such a nice introduction of the speaker uh, this is a very proud moment for uh, wesim to host uh, well known uh, personality manisha koira la ji uh in, initially when we hear this name we always think of uh, movies like uh, like in my younger days i saw 1942 a love story and after that bombay dil se and for younger lot as devendra pai said uh, they have seen her in uh, movies like sanju but that that does not define her her whole uh, personality and life and that is where this conversation is very very important she has uh, co-authored a book which is titled uh, healed how cancer gave me a new life she has written this book uh, with uh, co-author nilam kumar so uh, because this is a literature festival we will spend quite some time discussing about how this uh, book came into being when i was going through this book and its reviews one thing that struck to me is many times people write books for for the sake of writing a book but here when you read the book you really see the life journey and the searching of inner self by manisha ji so uh, without taking much time i will uh, ask uh, manisha ji to uh, tell us about how she thought about writing this book and uh, what was her experiences while writing this book manisha ji namaskar uh, thank you dr sir uh, for being here uh, with me and uh, thank you wasim for um, having me on this uh, honorable platform the amount of uh, people uh, the quality of the people and the speakers you guys have had to be among such uh, reputed people to be here i feel honored and humbled so thank you again um dr sab uh, you rightly um sense that actually through this book i was also trying to navigate my inner self to understand myself better uh, and also to be able to uh, express it to the viewers because i feel uh, uh, there are various kinds of storytellers and various kinds of uh, writers uh, but the kind of i uh, associate myself with are people who are authentic because they trust uh, the reader and uh, the reader and the writer should have a very trustworthy bond so it's not something to impress the writer it's not something to win over the writer but it's almost like being an open book and and being vulnerable enough 
and also telling that, look, I, I don't know the answers as of now, but let me navigate it. And while I navigate it, um, I go on a journey. Uh, and then whatever lessons I, uh, pointers or the lessons or whatever I have received during that journey, I would want to share. And I would hope that uh, the book becomes a, uh, that it becomes like an authentic journey for the reader. B, the lessons that I have learned uh, could at some point in their life, not necessarily somebody has to have cancer only, but uh, any point which is a breaking point uh, or disappointing or depression or some kind of a, a low point in their life, it could probably remind them of certain points and they, they could uh, benefit from that. When I was that, reading, just, just I would like to intervene here. When I was uh, reading gee. some of uh, the reviews of the book when it was published, you mentioned, uh, you said one particular sentence which actually uh, was a devastating uh, line. You said that cancer became a metaphor for all that was wrong in my life. This is, right. a, I think this is a very, very uh, strong sentence uh, you said. How, how right. you said, because we view as a very successful person, so <laughs> how, uh, you say that cancer uh, is representing everything what was wrong in your life. How did you say that? Basically, Dr. Saab, uh, you know, uh, 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 probably people that this is this is actually a question which uh, in a different form people, many people ask me is that you've had such a wonderful and successful career. How can you be depressed or how can you be sad or how could you say that you're not happy or you, uh, what happens is um, um, a we are performers, we are actors, we are trained uh, to do acting um, while we are on the set. And so many times it has happened that even if I have a personal trauma inside me, I, I, I disconnect with that personal trauma and I still go on the set and excel uh, because uh, that's what I'm trained to do. That's that's up, and maybe uh, for a time being, that disconnection helps me to dis, you know uh, not to worry about what is what is actually traumatizing me. So I guess one aspect is that. The other aspect I want to elaborate, want to take this podium and also say that uh, we assume through various uh, paparazzi through. Uh, certain yellow journalism through different perceptions that it's a very easy life that actors lead that is a very comforted with five star and and that's like we also project to the world that we are above the normal and we lead a very cushioned life and we have uh, falana dhimka cars and we have falana dhimka lifestyle and that's also an image um, most of us portray that. Uh, um, but it's the thing, the fact of the matter is, I think most of the creative people, uh, whether it's an actor or actress or writers or a poet, or they are a hugely vulnerable lot. Because if your one is not really vulnerable, you can't create, you cannot be always, always be protected and you cannot be, so, it's, it's that um, uh, vulnerability and uh, also that the image that we project that, oh, we are um, uh, not of this real world, but we are very much of this real world. No, but we, this gap, this gap and, exists in each one, uh, all of us face this kind of gap. We project, we want to project to ourselves as a different person, like I'm a director of this institute. So I have to present myself as a leader. Yeah. Uh, Somebody, and then in my personal life, I may have some other uh, things to do. But so every one of us goes through this journey. Absolutely. But to share this. Absolutely, Dr. Saab. All of us, when we are going out there, we don't take our work, our, our problems into our work. But 
that doesn't mean that we don't have problems yeah. and and uh, so uh, and each ev every individual comes with uh, and also i think the creative lot uh, are they need to be vulnerable to be able to portray you know to be able to cry to be able to get angry to be able to do everything from your stomach not from just in here but from your uh, center of your core uh, if you really just, have uh, to perform whether that was one of the reason when you are writing the book you are saying that you are struggling with alcoholism uh, in your life so whether this alcoholism comes because of this uh, forgetting about the hard realities of life or it it is because of the company you generally keep in the industry or something you like. know there is not one uh, there's uh, i don't think there's only one kind of a truth everything is uh, dr saab um, overlapped mm. and and also the sense of maturity i would say you know uh, it's like when you are young you're rebellious and when you're told not to do you want to do that so uh, <laughs> when you're telling you when your parents you are, are telling to, don't walk to all the students in young age who are in that mode most of the time <laughs> so you know when my parents used to tell me don't walk on that road there are you know gaddhas wahan pe gir jaogi tum but i would say nahi mujhe gir ke khud apna lesson learn karke fir mujhe chalna hai abhi jo maturity aayi hai now the maturity that i have mm. your uh, some yeah yeah sorry if somebody tells me don't walk on that path that's there are potholes in that path i will not walk i will actually even if i have to go out very carefully because i don't want to fall and waste my energy because i feel life is limited and in that life uh, let's you know fill with a lot of good things that we learn a lot of nice things that we grow and lead a very good uh, fulfilling successful um, uh, growth filled life rather than committing mistakes and then learning from it and mis you know i think that's a waste of time no in everyone's <laughs> life you stay from 25 years to 40 years that is the year of ambition growth and uh, working very hard to achieve what you want to do and you have your own perceptions of life what you want to be so everyone goes to that stage but coming back to your personal struggles you also talk about uh, struggling with putting on weight and then uh, you know this everyone goes through that so how do you yeah. uh, overcome that see you... again that's again is a sense of not really caring about my well being mm. because i feel uh, at it's okay to indulge in eating uh, whatever your taste requires but giving too much into that is ultimately a very unhealthy outcome so uh, enjoying something i will never say don't don't enjoy but when you know the damage you have done after uh, enjoying that ice cream or that samosa or you know the combination of whatever um i would say that uh, look after you be very much in tune with how your body is feeling after consuming that and more or less it feels uh, uh, digestive is slow we are feeling sluggish we are feeling you know something is not right so try and if you're damaging your body do a lot to heal your body and this i learned in in during my cancer journey um you know when i had to heal after whatever doctors had to do or first that you had cancer when did you discover this every most of my lesson dr saab has come to me uh, after my cancer because uh, that's when i started looking at the minutest of things that i was doing wrong and because i needed to heal myself this was my last chance this was my only chance to lead a healthy and happy life because i wouldn't uh, i mean i don't have a luxury of making mistakes 
So I think I made so many mistakes towards myself in the past. I no, think both were, were Now, uh, minutely, I need to. While writing the book, you say that I have been very bad in choosing the people who come in my life. I was very bad in choosing, always choosing the wrong guys. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, your picture is uh, frozen. Hello. I think there is some connection problem with Manisha ji's video. Swati, please take care. Yes, sir, we are trying, sir. Hmm. I think she's logged out. She'll come. Hmm. So all those who are listening, uh, students, they should uh, really look at the life lessons. One can be very, very successful. But at the same time, if you don't take care of your health. Manisha ji is back. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, welcome back. So uh, just aapka jab connection cut gaya, I was asking you that you write in the book that somehow आपने हमेशा गलत व्यक्ति को ही पसंद किया और नजदीक आया ऐसा कैसे हो सकता है? So uh, basically what happens is uh, uh, I feel my work took so much of my time I never never really had time to understand uh, people hmm. and uh, what happens is uh, if you are a very trusting nature, mm. um, you tend to do mistakes. Mm. But on the retrospective now, uh, I feel even my friends, uh, anybody that comes closer to me, I screen them a lot. And mm. uh, not saying that I'm any superior or anything like that. It's just that I feel I need to protect myself. And, and, and uh, the... the if even in a friend friend's uh, environment, if I feel a friend is bringing in too much of negativity through mm. the conversation, I say, "Bhaiya, maaf karo. Aap apne raste cholo, mujhe apne raste jaane do." Because I feel we are not really helping each other uh, in any way. So um, if somebody is bringing in some value, uh, teaching me certain lessons or helping me to grow and be peaceful or helping me to be kinder human being, um, the most welcome. Otherwise, I'm very much happy in my own space. I'm a loner, uh, I, I like my own company. I do my gardening, I do my cooking, I, I read, write or whatever. So now whoever has to walk into my area, uh, I screen them a lot, which I didn't do earlier. Yeah, that's why while writing the book, you are saying that this book is a journey of soul searching and also a bottomless pit of painful memories. Yes, yes. Uh, because memories, you know, uh, happy memories, many times they touch and go, but painful memories, they remain with us in our deep consciousness. So uh, true. How did you deal with that? First thing is to acknowledge them, Dr. Sa. First thing is to bring out all your wounds in the open and, and, and really stare at them and, and, uh, and say, okay, this is, this, this is what it is. Would I want to lead my next uh, coming years, whatever years that I have left to live, uh, influenced by these wounds, or do I want to lead a fresh start um, by you know, choosing the right thing rather than ever unconsciously driven by these wounds? Because it, it, it normally happens that. If we don't face our wounds, then unconsciously we are driven by such wounds and our decision gets impacted by that, our choices get impacted by that, and we are in that negative loop. So to come out of the loop, first thing is to be authentic, to have courage to say, ye, ye hai, ye hai, sab table ke upar rakhna chahiye, aur usko gaur se dekhna chahiye ki, okay, fine. I mean, I'm not a superhuman being. I have these 
bunch of uh, pain, painful past, painful existence, painful this thing. I do I want to be impacted or uh, this thing in my coming future? Do I want to carry them in the future? I don't want to do that. Okay, so uh, will you describe the process of writing this book? Because uh, if to be so honest and uh, putting everything in front of uh, people, your fans and you are a well-known person, so a lot of people would read your book. So what was the process of writing this book? Okay, the process itself has been very interesting for me because I'm not a writer, Dr. Sab. You know, I, uh, unlike you who have written such amazing books, um, I'm basically an actor, uh, but I love to express. I feel the um, creativity in me is to tell stories and to, I observe things quite uniquely and uh, I would want to. So my cancer, first of all, I really wanted to tell uh, this cancer journey. So I started navigating who can help me write. There was this a naturopath healer. She is, an, uh, she is actually um, certified uh, nutritionist. And she's a friend of mine since school. Um, uh, she's actually my school teacher's uh, uh, daughter. And so we kind of connected. And she was first one on the board. But she and I somehow could not work through. Then there was a wonderful woman who actually showed me you know, uh, just surrendering to the creativity. And she showed me a beautiful uh, mechanism to write the book. So Simi, her name is Simi, really helped me a lot. Mm. Um, and then uh, came Neelam. Now Neelam and me have been uh, in constant talk regarding my book for a year and two before. Okay. Uh, but we were thinking of some other book and something else and that never materialized. So when this fell apart, I contacted Neelam. I said, Neelam, we don't have much time. Uh, almost say 80% of the book is ready, uh, but I am not very happy. It's all mishmash. Would you be able to uh, piro it properly and, and help uh, give it a shape? You know, let's work together for two months so she and I really, I think I probably pushed uh, poor Neelam quite a lot. Um, uh, we would sit and talk on the phone or be together in the room for 10, 10 hours, mm -hmm. long hours. Okay. And, um, and uh, I'm really grateful for Neelam to come in at the last minute and help me shape this book beautifully. She is a very uh, experienced writer. She has written many books. She also dealt with another cancer survivor twice. Uh, she's dealt with the pain, so she knows what it takes. Uh, it's just that her style of uh, narration and my style uh, was totally different. So we had to somehow work long hours to understand each other and somehow find a middle way and, and to tell the story. Uh, so I'm grateful for Neelam. Um, and I think two months we did it night one night and it was and then of course it went to the editing to the penguin and then it's received well and very very happy but I'm very 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 grateful for Rachna Chachi I am extremely grateful for Simi because Simi really um, you know brought out the feminine qualities uh, the vulnerability, the longing, the heartache, the beauty, uh, the details in the story. And Neelam helped me to just put, give it the whole shape of the book. So these three ladies are very important to me. Definitely, writing process is a very, very cumbersome process. It the is. Story is uh, easy, but putting that in a particular words, formats, is very very yeah. difficult and editors of the publishers uh, they are also very very strict about certain flow exactly so when you came first on the screen i saw your t-shirt and the problem is the gift <laughs> <laughs> and then your book says that all of us have limitless human potential and uh, we rekindle our inner spirit to face every challenge life throws at us 
so i think this is how you summarize the the main theme of your book that life will keep on throwing challenges at us but if we are at peace with our inner self and we understand who we are then we can deal with them is this uh, what you are trying to say that with your life experiences this is the way uh, people who are going through various phases of life success or failure or physical uh, illness so how uh, we can face those challenges in life i feel first of all i think uh, we human beings have really not understood uh, understood the value the potential that we have in in ourselves and 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 but we have a potential of healing ourselves we have the potential of leading a great life we have i think god has made us with a lot of love and affection and care it just that we need to value what god has given us and and that uh, is what i i said it on my book that this there's a limitless potential that again <clears throat> the video is stuck Yeah, when she rejoins, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, her film journey and various other achievements which she has. So, uh, all the students and the listeners. i am sure you are enjoying this conversation with uh, manisha koirala ji and uh, she has written a brutally honest book healed if you have time buy this book and read it this will give you many many life lessons yeah Devend is she joining back So they are trying Okay So while she joins some of the audience can uh, tell me some questions which you would like to uh, like me to ask her Yeah I think she has joined Yeah Yes, Manisha ji. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So we can hear you again. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. For, I think the network is pretty bad. So yeah, that is Jeez. that is fine. Now, uh, last one year Jeez. we have been conducting all. So, this. <clears throat> so please continue. I was. Uh... Yes. Yeah. Please continue. Uh, you are talking about the yeah basically i was uh, saying that uh, in the book book is actually hmm. um i was talking about the my book is dedicated to the yeah again uh, we have lost her so uh, audience can put their your comments in the chat box and if you want me to ask any particular question 
or you can also put that in the chat box. I will uh, read it and ask her. Yeah, she is back again. Hi. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Ji, namaskar. Namaskar, yeah, yeah. Ji, basically, I was just saying that we human being. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, we, yeah. Hello. Ha, Manisha ji, we can see your video. So again, there's a network issue. She might come back. Okay. okay. Swati madam, she can uh, stop her video. Then probably we can hear her audio. Okay, okay. We'll ask her when she comes. Yeah, you, yeah. Ask her to stop her video because yeah. then the network is not so you so much used. Okay. Every time she touches human potential, the internet shows its potential to disrupt human potential. We have a question from Shalini. Uh, when she comes back, we will ask. So there's one more. Hello? Ah. Yeah. Ronak Sharma wants me to ask her about uh, how she got into acting and how extracurricular activities are important in a student's life. So we will ask these questions. Manisha ji, stop your video and unmute yourself, please. Darshna, unmute Manisha ji. Hello? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, please stop your video. Stop the video. Yes, then connectivity might be better. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. so please continue You're talking about human potential, limitless human potential. Yeah, basically, I'll make it short, Doxa, because I think uh, uh, the network is bad. No, now, uh, video off, I think uh, audio will not be a problem because video takes a lot of bandwidth. Okay. So uh, I have um, dedicated the book Heal to uh, the limitless potential of every individual uh, to combat any kind of setbacks. 
um, that potential if we realize and nurture and you know because I feel it's uh, when uh, divine or God or uh, whichever form that you believe in has given us this life has also given us this potential and um, it's only us not understanding that we kind of uh, become weaker or a victim or, or uh, things like that. But if we understand the kind of gifts we have, we can, uh, you know, outshine, we can become uh, better, we can, any kind of a setback, any kind of a problem, any kind of a situation, uh, we can deal with it. And hopefully we can really overcome and, and become better from that setback. Manisha uh, ji, is, you, uh, you know, ji. Uh, for this uh, mental strength, many times people ji. go to some gurus or learn some meditation or yoga technique. Did you ji. follow that path? I did everything, Dr. Saab. I have, uh, I have lived in an uh, ashram for six months uh, to understand. Because for me, I think the self-knowledge uh, uh, or the self-education was very, very, very important uh, to understand myself, to understand this life. Um, because when I was thinking that I was going to die, I really was uh, praying that Lord gives me a second chance and that second chance I'm going to live well. And then I also started thinking, what does that mean? What does that really transpire into what uh, living well what does it mean really so there were four or five uh, categories and in the first and most important thing for me is to understand the self to to know the self and in that process uh, i am a spiritual uh, seeker so even now I go through, I go to a lot of, in Kathmandu, there are a lot of monasteries and there are a lot of masters here. So I go to various masters and I, even now uh, I learn, I think the learning process will never stop for me. Yeah, uh, but, but I, yeah, when I went to Chennai, there is a lovely ashram. I stayed there for six months. I constantly read books. I constantly understand uh, from the teachers and the masters and the sages and so many people before us. Um, that, and, is, uh, that is great. Uh, yeah. one, uh, so you became a motivational speaker. Uh, how, how did you become motivational speaker? Did people start calling you after reading your book or they wanted to learn from you? You went to many corporates or you have, to, you have conducted many sessions. So what exactly you touch upon when you uh, give these motivational uh, speeches? So there are two things, uh, Dr. Sir. One was that, uh, believe it or not, I was a very, very stage shy person. Now people mm -hmm. often wondered, being an actor, how can you be shy? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> most, uh, most of us are shy. You know, we are confined into a studio, confined into this, uh, the unit team and then the camera and all that. And then we rehearse and then, you know, this so much is all well prepared for. But facing the audience is something that I was very nervous and uh, I used to fumble a lot. So one thing I really wanted to overcome is the fear uh, of the stage. So that was one of my reasons uh, that I don't want to be that second also i wanted to tell my story so that uh, if i could uh, motivate people to uh, learn from the lessons and and uh, you know navigate uh, whatever navigation i've done off life uh, if that could be helpful to them so a friend of mine uh, encouraged me to give a talk in one of the corporate houses and my first experience was at the sipla and uh, and and it went off really well and that after that i realized oh i can give a talk and people would appreciate and people would benefit from uh, from it so my journey began began from there okay let us again begin from the beginning itself 
uh, i mm-hmm. was reading about your life journey and uh, initially you wanted to be a doctor right she <laughs> <laughs> how did you move from being a, uh, being a doctor to a model and an actor how did basically that basically doc sir the thing is if i focus on something i i tend to give uh, 200% of my my self into it uh also in my family there there are there were either politician or doctors or uncles my in my immediate uh, circle i i grew up in a joint family so um so it was either a politician or a doctors or engineers so i thought i will probably pick uh, be a doctor Hmm. and uh, never imagine that i'll be a film actor though we used to every sunday we used to go and watch movies as a family and all that and after the movies i would come and perform uh, in front of my parents and and stuff like that but never in my wildest dream i thought i'll be uh, a successful uh, film star and um there is no doubt you won four film fair awards and many many other awards but come, uh, when we are talking about a background of a doctors and politicians in your uh, family and yeah. you are so much socially conscious and uh, it, did it never occur to you to join politics as uh, uh, this is stage to uh, help so i'm i would definitely i think uh, want to be a part of a solution in any society that i live in um and uh, not part of a problem but part of a uh, uh, solving uh, this thing solution but um, uh, politics is something else altogether and i i have lived as and i have been as an actor or a creative person uh and i'm pretty happy in in this space um maybe in future if something i feel social work uh, you have been a goodwill ambassador unfpa in 99 then 2015 you are also goodwill ambassador you worked a lot during Jeet. nepal earthquake so you Jeet. are connected with the society and uh, being person from politics uh, maybe i am not uh, promoting nepotism or uh, dynasty <laughs> <laughs> but still with uh, your kind of experience uh, you will definitely be successful as a politician what do you say i would definitely i i think um, in my environment uh, we talk politics morning till night Mm-hmm. uh the day begins with politics it ends with politics and um, socially contribution i feel every individual in the society should somehow step out of the comfort zone and help the people in needy but it should be automatic process it should not be something that one is forced to do but it should be like if i if i um if i am honestly authentically moved by a, a story which i read in the newspaper which happened you know which happens to me mm-hmm. i want to move forward and do something i want to be a part of the solution i want to do something contribute something definitely okay coming back again to the beginning your first hindi movie was saudagar directed Ji. by sahaj ghai ji so how did that movie come about well uh, that movie actually um, uh, i was in uh, delhi i was in delhi and i met with uh, one of the film journalists called meena ayer mm. who was my uh, mother's friend mm. and uh, she encouraged me to come to mumbai and and meet the filmmakers so my mother me and meena ayer meena di i call her we went to we uh, were in mumbai and whoever i met uh, two three top filmmakers and they all kind of encouraged me mm-hmm. they all were very encouraging they all uh, you know uh, gave me space somehow uh, it it felt as if uh, it's not going to be a great struggle for me that it'll, it'll i would 
I would somehow find my space in this industry. No, no, it felt in the very beginning. Very natural in front of the camera. I remember that 1942 a love story. That whole movie was revolving around you, and how Gee. how that movie came into being, because that was uh, in the background of independence movement, and then the love story that was a very uh, unique combination for a plot of that movie. Ji. See, basically, uh, Vidhu Vinod Chopra um, um, uh, was doing a lot of screen tests those days. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, I also was one of the screen, uh, I did a screen test. And then Vinod completely rejected me, saying that I was not good at all. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of uh, insisted with him that give me one more chance. And that, um, Dr. Sabai, that day when I came back home, um, you, you don't feel like uh, uh, doing anything except read those dialogues and master the dialogues. Mm -hmm. And there was one full page uh, of dialogue, I think one or two pages of dialogue. I really got... I didn't know what was good or bad, but I knew that Mary Nazar un do pejo se bahar hati nahi. The chobis ghante ke and the jo mene menet ki. Next day, uh, when I went to give him the second screen test, mm. he said, Manisha, uh, agar tum kal zero thi, to abhi aaj tum 100% ho. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, God knows whatever you've done. But mm. if you're willing to put in this effort for throughout the film, mm. then I'll take you in the movie. So I just it just clicked to me that I really have to focus and work hard in each and everything that I do to be successful. So, uh, Doctor, I mean it. A lot of effort goes to be a good actor. A lot of preparation. A lot of focused attention lot of hours See, so we movie, movie um, is about two two and a half hours and every actor may get a screen time of say 60 minutes to 80 minutes isn't it right right and for that uh, movie making takes nearly one year right how do you sustain that kind of momentum in your acting throughout the year First of all, if if you uh, Dr. if you love what you do, if you love uh, cinema, if you love theater, if you love acting, and if you love, I think what happens is every day, even you talk to any classical uh, singer, Sonal Man Singh Ji has uh, come to your uh, podium and spoken. Look at her. You know, it's it's. Her life has gone in doing sadhana. That is her puja. Dance is a puja. Da dance is a sadhana. Her living every minute is goes to that. So likewise for our theater actors, likewise for the film actors, is same sadhana, same thing. It it compels us to. Um, we are surrounded with that. We dream of that, we uh, eat humor, that, we... are associated with is only uh, for a show. The real thing is the hard work which goes on uh, behind it, isn't it? Ab absolutely. Ab without the hard work, there's no way one can excel. No you know, way one can excel. Acted, acted in movies by Mani Ratnam. You know, he is considered to be the god of Tamil cinema. How was your absolutely. experience with him in Bombay with Arvind Swami? I would say, Dr. Sahib, I was very blessed with uh, such hard task masters. At also the same time, very task company. Very loving at the same time, hard task masters in my initial phases of my career. So mm -hmm. Subhaji also had put us in a very tight schedule of learning from, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Birju Maharaj ke saath, classical dancing, dialogue delivery, horse riding from the uh, Verma brothers. I mean, you name it, we got trained. Then Vinod Chopra, who brought me how many hours, you know, how much to work on it. Then Mani Ratnam, sir. Mm. Now, Mani Ratnam, sir's entire working time those days was like, he would probably sleep for two hours or one hour or three hours. That's it. 
and 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 rest of us too like i had to mug the tamil dialogue so i would get up at 4 in the morning till 3 uh, or till till 7 o'clock and from 7 uh, in the morning i would be shooting till 2 in the night so um i mean itna kaam kiya itna kaam kiya itna kaam kiya aur uh, no complaints because us kaam mein masti thi us kaam mein hamara jaan tha i mean we um, i mean we loved our work we loved what we were doing That so was really commercial successful movie gupt i remember with bobby deol uh, i think and kajol yeah so Yeah, so different movies no, no, has a different uh, company take. and Bombay, and then there are these light movies. Uh, how do you balance yes. these kind of roles? Well, I think it was a conscious decision on my part to not be too uh, too much of one thing. Uh, I would have wanted to do a balance of light-hearted commercial film as well as serious films with the serious directors. um and luckily for me i got chance to do both then uh, how uh, you got motivated to study again you went to new york university to do your diploma in film making i, I think somewhere around 2003 4 how did that come about uh 2004 5 or something like that yeah mm-hmm. i basically uh, doctor wanted to uh, study and make a film and uh, i never really uh got down to making a film but i also needed a break i also needed a break and be away from this stardom and and the because it's also a trap to stay 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 a celebrity so yeah. when i went to nyu to study i basically had to drop every thing support system that you get as a celebrity and become a student Mm-hmm. and learn from a scratch um and it was a very intense course we were doing from 9 in the morning till 9 in the night uh 12 hours a day um and school uh, chairs are very uncomfortable but when i was looking at my other classmates they were much younger than me they were mm-hmm. again the audio link has is disturbed So please ask audience question after this. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I think you unmute her again. Manisha ji has been muted. No, she's. My joy. I think some of the audience questions I have already covered. Yes, sir. Uh, Ronak Sharma is uh, getting into acting, and uh, okay, Doctor Sab, sorry, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would be let's let's do this last because I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, there are too there many. Are some, dis- uh, there are some audience questions. I am going through the audience. Okay. Questions. I have asked many okay. many of them. We have covered like your. Uh, Uh, acting. Uh, how did you start your acting career? There is a question about your uh, interaction with Sadguru Jaggi Vasudev. Ji. Uh, how how uh, how was that experience? Because uh, I listened to him and he's such a such a good orator and uh, he mesmerizes everyone who talks to him. So how was your experience talking to him? Amazing, because uh, actually Guruji's. Uh, I used to hear a lot about Guruji through Shekhar Kapoor, oh. and and uh, when I uh, met Guruji, I was totally mesmerized. Mm. And uh, he speaks beautifully. He has so much of wisdom. He has so much of depth. Um, I was I didn't know what to you know uh, say. I was actually pretty nervous when I was talking to him because he's he's a plethora of wisdom. He has so much in him. and and um, i think one talk is not enough i would want to do another talk <laughs> and uh, 
uh i absolutely uh, adore um, and i feel very honored that i was one of the people that uh, you know uh, got a chance to talk to him but i was generally asking more of the question of the audience but this time i want to ask my questions you know <laughs> so uh, let's so there is a second video time. now yeah you can switch on your video now for last 2 uh, 3 minutes uh, yeah okay okay so there is another question from uh, vipin uh, mm -hmm. is asking uh, is it possible for a person from a non film background in today's cinema to actually make a mark the way you were able to do it i feel uh, most uh, of um, the profession whether uh, anything you don't really need to be uh, an insider uh, if you have a passion mm. if you have uh, a willingness to hard work mm. and intelligence when to strike and want when to pull back you mm. know that's so important you know uh, and at the same time if you really have passion and you are you are skilled in your job that your dialogue delivery you have a presence um, you can act you know and you can be in a different character you can move around there is no way uh, that you will not shine look if you have talent you will get opportunities absolutely rajkumar rao we have so many people today you know you see uh, so many talented young people in the industry and there is they're nothing they're not from the uh, film industry more question from srk fan i i believe uh, <laughs> mrudula Gangulde, she wants to know your experience working with S R K in Dil Se. You acted, uh, of, I think you were terrorist in that movie. Yes, yes. Uh, working working with S R K has been wonderful. Uh, he is uh, he's filled with so much of energy. He is so charming um, and hardworking. So the whole entire experience was wonderful. he is also an outsider from the film industry but he could make it so i am sure uh, if you have talent uh, nobody can stop you no one can stop you uh, one more question by uh, juriani vinay juriani he wants to know how do you uh, detach from the roles which you are playing intensely and coming back to your normal life how do you uh, that transition how you manage it's very it's a first lesson one has to learn because uh i feel uh as an actor you give so much of your being uh your soul your spirit your mind everything in that character it's very very important to say cut off and i'm being myself and and there is it's it's like a um, emotional shower you know you just go and just disconnect and there is various mechanism one does to disconnect okay. but that is the first thing one has to do because emotional people like me mm. can really get pulled in with that you know Im imagine if i'm playing a heartbroken depressed sad suicidal uh, woman you know and if i come back with the same lurking thoughts it will be no, disastrous like for me in khamoshi you know a very intense movie khamoshi very intense movie exactly exactly it's it's uh, people like us who are empaths who can feel the pain who can feel the energy we have to have a mechanism of protecting our soul our spirit while we perform and when we come back home it should completely be washed out there is one more question about your film lajja you know uh, it was a very very hard hitting uh, movie again murdula wanted to know about your experience of working with lajja and uh, lessons for today's uh, women i think lajja uh, what i loved about uh, lajja was it was made and written by a man so that means uh, um, men are not uh, insensitive to women's pain mm -hmm. and in lajja we are talking about a uh, women's struggle from a high strata to the lowest income so what happens is um, 
uh, Rekhaji's character or Rekha, that village uh, character where Zamindars are, uh, you know, um, making use of the, you know, women or in a high strata woman, which I, my character is married to a very rich man but they only interested in carrying having the son so it talks about women of different society a different aspect of the society and their struggle and how they can overcome and how they can be supportive to each other and how relevant that problem is even today and also we must realize that even men uh, are supportive to women's uh, pain and struggle. You know, this, it, it was Rajkumar Santoshi who wrote and directed this film. Yeah, so uh, men are also sensitive towards women's uh, struggle and pain. I think uh, we have been uh, just, uh, we, we have overshot our time by five minutes, but I am, I would still like to ask one last question to you. Uh, after Sanju, uh, the last movie which you have acted in, we became a super duper hit. And uh, you have written a book, which is really a motivational uh, book. So uh, your future plans, how, how would you like to see yourself in next uh, coming five, 10 years, uh, your personal goals, your personal uh, journey, as well as uh, helping the society? How do you see yourself in coming few years? So Dr. Saab, I'm basically um, forever reinventing and figuring out what's important to me um, at, uh, at every step. So I don't intend to plan long, long uh, time, even though I would like to have a blurred kind of a vision. And, but I'm very open because I feel what cancer has taught me is to be very, very present and be, you know, not in my head and not in my plans because I can plan something and God has some other plans, you know. <laughs> so I intend to be present in my today's situation. I, I want to be happy and content. That is the lesson I would, I, I think everyone who is listening to you, because all your achievements and uh, your acting or whatever you have done is because you lived in your present. Yes, yes. It's important to live in the present, I feel. Because and enjoy enjoy the blessings enjoy of life. life, you know, enjoy the blessings of life. And don't abuse yourself, isn't it? Why Absolutely. It no, no uh, way. Being honest with oneself. I think uh, we have lots of lessons from this conversation with Manisha Ji Koirala. And uh, I am sure that uh, students uh, would have found it a very, very interesting conversation. And uh, maybe in future, uh, when this Corona is not there, we will have opportunity to interact with you personally. And a lot I of- I would love to come, Dr. Sam. Happy to meet you. Uh, with that, uh, Devendra, I will give uh, mic back to you. Yes. Thanks a lot, Manisha ji, once again for- uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. Thank you, Manisha and ji. Thank you, Dr. Moor. And uh, before we formally conclude this session, uh, we do a couple of contests as a part of our activities during the Vesam Lit Fest. So I would like to announce the winners for the Mobile Film Festival first. The winners are Shreya Dhumal, Shreya Rao, Kajal Sharma. We would also like to announce the winners of the Young Writers Contest, Hansa Jeswani, Dheeraj Dirwani and Kajal Sharma. Congratulations, everyone. I congratulated all the six winners of the Mobile Film Festival and the Young Writers Contest. I thank uh, Ms. Manisha Koirala for joining us in this opening session. She spoke about uh, things beyond films. She showed us a side which was a very up close and personal side of us. She spoke about her issues with alcoholism, dealing with cancer, spoke about the process of writing her book acting, how her career began and her journey from a Bombay or a love story to uh, a present new generation of cinema. Uh, I also thank Professor Satish Mode for having this wonderful conversation, hosting this wonderful conversation, which uh, gave us and showed us different perspectives and different aspects of uh, Ms. Manisha Koirala's life. And I thank our audience 
who have joined us both on Zoom live as well as Facebook live. Uh, we'll take a 20 minute break and we'll be back again at 11.30 for our second session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.